Good morning. I'm Jen Amos at Weiss Research. I'm Andy Myers, and this is your morning market update for Friday, July 1st. Investors on Wall Street seem to be sticking to the sidelines in early trading as we kick off the second half of 2011. The first half of the year ended on a four-day rally spurred by optimism about the Greek Parliament's approval of new austerity measures. That vote is likely to win the struggling country its next 12 billion euros of international aid and allow Greece to meet its short-term debt obligations. But some analysts say enthusiasm about the deal may wane soon, as investors realize that Greece and other Eurozone nations are still in danger of default. The U.S. economy may also become more of a concern as July continues. The Federal Reserve's second round of quantitative easing officially ended yesterday, and many traders are anxious to see how the lack of central bank support will affect the markets. On the corporate front, auto stocks may see heavy trading volume today. All the major car companies are releasing their June domestic sales numbers throughout the day. It's expected to be another good month for Detroit's big three, as they likely continued to grab U.S. market share from international rivals. In May, General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler were the three best-selling automakers for the first time in five years. TrueCar.com is projecting double-digit gains for all three companies in June with Chrysler having an especially strong month. Its sales probably rose 34% thanks to increased demand for its Jeep Grand Cherokee and Dodge Durango vehicles. Japan's Honda and Toyota Motor are likely to post another month of declines. They're struggling to catch up with U.S. automakers and South Korea's Hyundai Kia, which is expected to report a 43% surge in June U.S. sales. Earlier this week, Moody's Investor Service slashed Toyota's credit rating due to weakening market share, the strong yen, and high raw material prices. One of the day's biggest stock winners is the for-profit education provider Apollo Group. After yesterday's closing bell, it topped analyst estimates with a 15% increase in fiscal third quarter profit. Following the report, FBR Capital boosted its price target on Apollo shares, and they're rising more than 5% in early trading. Another related stock seeing some action is Blackboard Incorporated, which provides multimedia and graphic software to the education industry. It's being acquired by Providence Equity Partners for almost $1.7 billion in cash and debt. The purchase price is a 21% premium over Blackboard's closing price on April 18th, the day before it announced that it was considering a sale. Shares of Blackboard are gaining nearly 2% on the news. Meanwhile, the bankrupt bookstore operator Borders Group has found a buyer. It's Direct Brands, a unit of the private investment company Najafi. Direct Brands also owns Book of the Month Club, Doubleday Book Clubs, Columbia House DVD, and BMG Music Service. A couple more stories to keep your eye on today. The Federal Trade Commission reportedly is reviewing Twitter's interactions with at least one other company. According to the Financial Times, the question is whether Twitter acted unfairly toward other developers with businesses that tapped into the microblogging services global audience. The Wall Street Journal says one of those companies is Uber Media, which owns applications that let subscribers read and send tweets. And finally, BlackBerry maker Research in Motion has reached a deal with shareholder NEI Investments. That firm sponsored a resolution that would have divided the roles of CEO and chairman. RIM said it will appoint a committee of independent directors to study the issue and make a recommendation to the full board. That's the latest from Weiss Research. The markets are closed on Monday for the 4th of July, so we'll see you back here on Tuesday. Have a great trading day and a fabulous weekend.